according to the Tanakh, King Saul was the son of Kish. <laughs> you know, get the draw. We've been talking Kish, Kush, Cash. You know, there's a Cash, there's a Kush, there's a Kish, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. One of the 12 tribes of Israel. Saul married Ahinoam, daughter of Ahamaaz, and had four sons and two daughters. The sons were Jonathan, Abinadab, Mal Kishwa, and Ish Bal Sheth. Saul's daughters were Merab and Mikal. Pushtan folklore and some historians suggest that King Saul had five sons instead of four. The fifth was named Jeremiah Ermia. Hey, shout out to the neighborhood Nip, man. His name is Hermes or Hermes, you know what I mean? But it's all Jeremiah, man. And it says the legend describes Malak Afghana. So you got Afghanistan today as the son of Jeremiah, grandson of King Saul. So there's a lot in the so-called Middle East, a lot of so-called Arabic tradition that goes directly into Israel, into the tribe of Benjamin, right? Now it's something different, but originally, you know, you have a direct connection with the tribe of Benjamin, King Saul, and then, you know, in the um, medieval histories of the Israelites by uh, Rob Grisham, or Robert Grisham, I believe, you know, it talks about how David had Jeremiah, you know, in his court, you know what I'm saying? So he served in David's court after the death of Saul. So Jeremiah literally grew up in the court of King David. It is mentioned that Afghanistan was orphaned at a young age and brought up by King David. Bang. Second witness, <laughs> when Solomon became the king, Afghanistan was made commander in chief of the army. Afghanistan is also credited with the building of the first temple in Jerusalem. Afghanistan, <laughs> Afghanistan built the first temple in Jerusalem, the Temple Mount, an Arabic called Haram al-Sharif. Right, so then you got this Al Rashid family popping off, and this Al Rashid family, you know, is popping off directly out of Afghan, which is coming out of Jeremiah, which is coming out of Saul, you know, also connected with King David. So, just because they try to claim something as you know, Islam today, or Arabic today, or Middle East today, you're still talking America. He's still talking the prophets of Israel. Yeah, I just want to make that connection as we dig on another great one, you know, dig on this joke Tom <laughs> and see how this joke Tom flow also connects with the Arabic flow and, you know, how so much has been covered up over there, you know, as they rewrite their Quran and they walk around their queue. But I ask you, man, all that walking around the queue, all that marching around the cube in the 1700s and before, right? I mean, before we're talking the migrations, 1785, on the headbone of the Sheikh of Mago, on the headbone of the Kum saying, what did it do? We know what these treaties done, I mean, but what do you think, <laughs> Morocco? You know, what do you think it's done to the indigenous con of America? We suffering, you walking around cubes, 
what did this cube do for us? So if it did, if it's done nothing for us, we know it's done everything to harm us with your harmonics. Your harmonics didn't do nothing to save these Nagas from brutal genocide. Your treaties did nothing to save us out of nothing ever, only yourselves. And this is why we are over here focusing on this particular time, you know, time in a timeline, but not. I mean, this ain't no play play. I mean, this is obvious. Hindsight's 2020. We all know we've been destroyed by these treaties, man. 30 million acres at a time being given up. Treaty of Fort Wayne. Tribing up against the Clemson. What did it do, man? You know it didn't help us. Did it help black people or hurt black people? We black, right? We black now. You white, we black. But we got a white snow of glaciation popping off, right? Whether it's a wise curse or the curse of these damn harmonics, right? We got Muhammad being set up, Mecca set up, the cube popping off. And look how big this area is, man. It says 380-mile circuit, some 350-mile circuit. I mean, that's a big piece, right? They can't just, you know, up and remove this entire holy mountain of harmonics, can they? Can these damn dams flood up all these areas? And, and, you know, you think something's underwater here, man? And I think they made treaties on the head bone of the Shikamaba, man. And if these treaties didn't hurt us, then all they did, if these treaties didn't help us, then all they did was hurt us, you know what I mean? And all this, all this, you know, pride for what, Moab? All this pride for what, Amon, Ishmael? All this migration and pride for what? Look at the death, look at the slaughter. You proud of that? We speaking on behalf of the indigenous Nagas already here. Already here serving our creator only, man. The Mexicans, the Philippines, all my Nagas, man. We, we here for you, man, because we still here fighting. We talking Afghan, Khan. I thought we was talking Afghan, man. Because Afghan is the son of Jeremiah. We didn't need to see it in a thousand dollar book, although it's in a thousand dollar book. Get it out the drop library. But you can also get it right here in Wiki, man. <laughs> hey, House of King Saul, tribe of Benjamin, is the Afghan. So when they say Arabic, sometimes they're still speaking cold word for Benjamin, cold word for Israel. When they put that on our crest, they say, uh, you know, Andrews, Ruth, Saracen's head. Wisdom is the conqueror of fortune. And they say, uh, well, the word Saracen is used in the early centuries of the Roman Empire describing the Arab tribe. But we're just talking about lost tribes of Israel, boss. What do Arabs have to do with Israel? I know on paper you just say, oh, well, you just talk about the Ishmaelites and, and the tribes of Isaac and Jacob and all that, right? Yeah, but they're using a lot of stuff interchangeable, man. I mean, Arab for them, you know, still falls under, the, under this Afghan flow. <laughs> this Afghan is the son or grandson of King Sa'u, chief of the army. <laughs> Rocking with King Solomon and King David, man. So you know he's a code keeper. So the code is there. Now we're talking Middle East or we're talking Asia. Let's go, boss. Let's talk jock talk. <laughs> who they also call Kata, right? Back it up. So knowing that Afghan is the son of Yeramahu, Jeremiah, 
right? And then they say younger son of Eber, progenitor of 13 Arabic tribes. Here we go again with the Arabia business. But he's the son of the Hebrew Eber, and Eber is the Kavera. Kavera, Kivera, Kiber is the Heber, is the Heber, man. Ania, we're going to talk Ania. Hey, this is Preston John, installment number 91. We popping up. Shabbat Shalom. We out of here. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ah, 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 ah. ooh, ooh, ooh. Don't stop, won't stop. The drop, don't stop. Yeah, we popping on. How y'all feeling, man? How y'all really, really? Y'all been leaving great comments. My Naga Ma said, keep pushing, man. Hit press the 100 on the head bone. So we ain't going to stop. We're going to keep pushing. Hit press the 100 on your head bone. Let's go. <laughs> All right. So Jock Tan, who is one of the sons of Eber, along with Peleg, right? Peleg in the days of Peleg, the earth divided. Cataclysm is popping off. Atlantis is sinking when Peleg is popping off, right? Younger son of Eber, progenitor of 13 Arabic tribes. He's the son of Eber. Well, let's go. Many of which as has uh, Maveth, Sheba, or Sheba, Ophir, and Havala. Havila or Hawa have been identified the name seems to mean the younger or the smaller or he who humbles himself okay now we've been talking Ophir, right we're talking philippines city of gold but Ophir is a person right Ophir is also a land but it's also a person like a lot of this stuff the name seems to mean the younger or the smaller or he who humbles himself and for his humility joktan was re rewarded by being made the ancestor of 13 tribes. The place of settlement of Joktan's descendants is given as from Mesha or Meshika or Meshiko. We're talking Joktan. Keep it in mind. Let's go. As thou goest unto Safar, mountain of the east. Where's the east, my night, right? So don't be thinking Middle East. Stay right here at home because we're just talking Meshi. Mesha, Mashika, we just talking Joktan or Yoktan or the Yucatan. So if we're talking Yucatan and we're talking Meshi, <laughs> Mexico, you see exactly where we go and where they go, there they go. The district indicated is in Arabia. Well, where's Arabia? Because, you know, we know where Asia's at. But Targum Pseudo Jonathan identified Sefer with Safarvim or Safarvam. So this Sephar could also be the Sephardic. <clears throat> Shalak, you know what I mean? Like, you know, Sephardic Jews and all this whole bloodline, but the Sephar is also, you know, connected with, you know, this area, you know, Meshi, Mesha, you know, connected with all this. So, Josephus asserts that their dwelling was from Kofa, C-O-P-H-E-N, an Indian river, and part of Asia. But where's Asia? Yeah, where's Pottery, Potter Eyes, Cathay, Florida, Cathay, Asia, Florida, Pottery. We're just talking America, right? So many cartographers got the China. <laughs> You coming out of South America, Peru. You go over Parias, Parias <laughs> into China. Or Cathay or what Florida would be right here still, right? So what does Florida got to do with China, man? I mean, it's all in the maps, right? 1561, Carta Marina. 1620, Alicarte de Navagar. Planes Fiero de Rosili. 1508, again, South America going right into Asia, India superior. So do not let these people trick you, fool you, pull you nowhere, man, because you're right here at home. In Arabic literature, Joktan in Arabic literature means the name Kata, 
We've been talking about the cars now. All right, we're getting closer. Car cut tie. Let's go. Genesis 10, Choctaw is described as the ancestor of several South Arabian tribes. He's the ancestor of Eber, but let's go. In accordance with this statement, Arab genealogists hold Qatan to be the first king of Yemen. Whoa. Whoa. So just like we got that Afghan and Afghanistan is coming from the loins of Jeremiah and King Saul connected with King Dawi. Joktan, son of Eber, is connected to all these Arabic, you know, progenitor of all these Arabic nations, just like Afghan. But these Arabic nations wasn't just popping off on some walking around the queue, Mohammedan, yada, yada. They were connected directly with the tribes of Israel. Titles, man. Now, in accordance with the statement, Arab genealogists hold Qatan to be the first king of Yemen and his son and successor, Yarub, the first person who spoke Arabic. First person speaking Arabic that they, you know, claim so much these other nations, right? <laughs> but the first person speaking Arabic, they're saying, they're saying, his granddaddy is Jaktan. <laughs> Son of Eber, man. This is but the legendary form of the tradition that Catan was the progenitor of the Southern Arabs or Arab proper, while the Ishmael Arabs were originally of non-Arab stock. Whoa. 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 Hey, I didn't mean to open up on a body bag, but say it with me. Body bag for the illusion. I didn't even read this the whole way. I'm just belly flopping with y'all, man. Like, whoa, whoa. Everything we are insinuating, they just laying it out in the Jewish, Jewish encyclopedias. So we're saying they faking the funk, man. We're pulling up the, the veil, right? Pulling the skirt, seeing what's, <laughs> seeing what they hiding under this thing, man. Cause, yeah, man. You know, sometimes they need to get their skirts pulled up, man. I mean, look, man. Arab proper, right? Is what they're saying. This Arab tribe thing connection with the Saracen. Described as an Arab tribe from the Sinai Desert. Oh, you mean Arab proper? Oh, they're over there in Asia. Oh, you mean Asia major? Oh, they're in India. This is an Indian river. Oh, you mean India uh, superior? India major? Asia? Asia major, we're just talking Arab proper. See, you didn't know there was a different differentiation, a difference between Arab non-proper <laughs> and Arab proper, man. Got him, got him, boss. It's pressed to 91. Got it, we gotta get him. Gotta have him by now. While the Ishmaelite Arabs were originally of non-Arab stock. So what's Arab stock? What's the proper Arab stock? I mean, the proper Arab stock means that you are connected to Eber, right? Jokta. Kata. Yeah. whose son was the first to speak Arabic. And Yarub looks a lot like Yakub, man, right? <laughs> okay. Whoa, but I got to read this again. This is but the legendary form of the tradition that Katan was the progenitor of the Southern Arabs.
Arab tribe, Saracen, lost tribes of Israel. So you mean to tell me that the Arab proper is the Israelite? The Arab proper is the Israelite? Is the Saracen? Is the Rus of Rush? <laughs> Glad to see all Andreas, man, stand all the way up. Because wisdom is the conqueror of fortune. And while you're walking around your cube, <laughs> talking about a war on terror in Afghanistan and Yemen. Wow. Knowing that Yemen. <laughs> All oh, these harmonics, man, these harmonics. Knowing that Yemen is the sun. Or Catan is the first king of Yemen. Joktan, Catan is the first king of Yemen. Yemen, Yemen, Yemen. So this war on terror in Afghanistan, Pakistan, Somalia, Yemen, might have a lot more to do with Israel than you think. What are they destroying when they're going to war in Afghanistan? What connection are they severing there? in Yemen. Progenitor of the Southern Arabs, while the Ishmaelite Arabs, the Ishmaelite Arabs are the ones, you know, the Ishmaelites walking in circles. Ishmael's migration. Right? They're Mac. The, <laughs> the Arabs non-proper, <laughs> the fake Arabs, I guess you would say, are migrating to the land of the proper Arab, right? <laughs> I'm trying to put it in their terms. They are pretending to be Arabs. Arab proper is not the same as Ishmaelites or Moabites or any of them. If Ishmael ain't a proper, none of the Confederacy is proper. Proper air. Arab, right? Non-Arab stock, but pretending to be Arabs, they adopted Arab customs and intermarried with genuine Arabs or what the wives, the women that are taken in captivity from all these wars, all these wars, more on more. So all this is happening, they migrating and then they start marrying into the family, whether we're talking the family of Benjamin or just the tribes of Israel, while you at war, Right, they take your women and then they're marrying in to get the title. But they're not proper, they are pretending. They are adopting the customs of the originals, which had nothing to do with Muhammad, but we're gonna talk it and intermarry with genuine heirs and <laughs> being therefore called Musta Rabs, Musta Rabs, Musta Rabs, all right? Another son of Catan who was called Ger or Jerhom immigrated to Northwest Arabia and founded a kingdom in the Hajaz, Hajiz, Hajaz. This tradition was probably invented at a later date in order to establish a close relationship between the Northern and Southern, southern tribes because it is added that Ishmael married a woman of the tribe of Gerhom and became a member thereof. 
and Gerhum or Jerhum is the son of Joktan. So yeah, Ishmael married their women, right? Took them captive because they had war <laughs> to become a member of the tribe. Now, what's wrong, Ishmael? What's wrong? What's wrong, man? I mean, you know, walking around your cube. Your women ain't good enough to be proper Arabs. Marrying an Ishmaelite, you know, sister ain't good enough. Your women ain't good enough. You have to marry into something, right? This is what we're talking about, man. So we're talking about, man. This is hijack city. We at war while y'all marrying our women and marrying into our royal homes and houses inheritance and taking titles now you the cherokee now you the this now you the hebrew you you all this eber talk right yeah well children of lot where's your lot if you were securing your lot you wouldn't be making these treaties ishmael if you was a proper arab you wouldn't be marrying in to Arab proper. Because the Ishmaelite Arabs were originally of non-Arab stock. But pretending to be Arabs, they adopted Arab customs, intermarried who? Ishmael married a woman of the tribe of Gerhum, Gerhum. Ishmael himself, man, <laughs> had to marry into the Joktan flow, which is the Eber flow. But we're just talking Eber, right? Genesis 10, right? These are the descendants of Noah's son, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now, here's some duplication for your head bone, right? <laughs> you got, you know, we, we touched on before Josephus bringing in this meshek out of nowhere. They're saying an ancient denomination still to be shown. Verse 6, uh, Genesis 10, you got the descendants of Ham. Cush, Egypt, put Canaan, the descendants of Cush. Now, here's where the duplication comes in because we just got in the Afghan flow about this Kish, right? <laughs> According to the Tanakh, King Saul was the son of Kish. So, Kish is the father of King Saul of the tribe of Benjamin. Now, what does Kish have to do with Cush and what does Cush have to do with Cash? I mean, I'll let you look it up and decide, but Kush, right, has Sheba, <laughs> Vala, Sapta, Rama, Sapteka. The sentence of Rama is another Sheba in the dark. Or maybe, you know, this all the same descendants of Kush, both Sheba's, but Sheba's popping up over here, skipping ahead to Shem's descendants. You got Eber, elder brother of Japheth. So some say Shem is the youngest, you know what I'm saying, of the three brothers, and you know, others say he's the eldest, father of all the children of Eber, who is the elder brother or Shem is also the elder brother of Japheth. Children were born, the descendants of Shem, Elam, Ashur, we're gonna talk some Ashur, Arpak, Shad, Lud, and Aram. The descendants of Aram, Uz, Hol, Gether, and Mash. Arpak, Shad became the father of Shelah, and Shelah, like Shalom, became the father of Eber. 
Ark Paksha, father of Shalah. Shalah is the father of Eber. Eber has Pele, right? Two sons. For in his days, the earth was divided. What we talking? Pangea, what we talking? Atlantis, what we talking? And his brother's name was Joktan. So that's the pedigree of Joktan. Whose father is Eber, whose father is Shalah, whose father is Arkpakshad, whose father is Shem, whose father is Noah. Got it. So Joktan's popping up with pedigree, right? He has pedigree, my nigga. Pedigree. <laughs> All right. And out of Joktan, which we got, you know, just now, also Katan. You know, he's popping off as the first king of Yemen. Where's Yemen? He's an Arab proper, right? From Mesha, Mesha to Safar. Original stock. His son Garhun is who Ishmael married into. Got it. <laughs> Ishmael married in so he could be an heir proper. Progenitor of the southern heir. We are seeing clear and clear, man, as we are getting the picture downloaded in real time that this is all connected. Okay. So these duplications come in with this Kush line, man, or this Kish line, you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> you got Kush, you know, popping off Sheba. And Havali. And then you got Jaktan over here, become uh became the father of Alamadad, Shelef, Haza Marvet, Jara, Hadaran, Uzal, Dikla, Obal, Abamael, Sheba, Ofer, Havala. And although, uh, unless I'm missing it, other translations have Ofer also listed under the descendants of Cush. Let me try to see if we can find another translation in a minute. But, you know, you see the Shiva Havala flow, you know. I, I mean, are there duplicates like that of this Shiva, you know, land of Shiva, this Havala flow? Or, you know what I mean, is it all one thing, man? For those that are able to understand, you know, like, you know, Josephus be talking about when he talks to his Meshech flow. There is also a mark on their ancient denomination still to be shown, like it's still to be re revealed. You ain't got all the drop yet, for there's even among them a city called Mazaka, which may inform those that are able to understand. That so was the entire nation once called. But now we're on our Mesha, right? Now we're on our Mesha flow. Getting to our Afghan flow. You know, the Afghan flow is the Arab proper flow. We're talking Haram al-Sharaf, right? We're talking uh, <laughs> Afghan migrated to a place known as Taka. Uh, Salaman. So he went somewhere connected with Salaman. All right. <laughs> Remember, he was serving under Solomon. Khan. So, yes, we're talking Solomon. And generations later, Kais Abdul Rashid, a descendant of 
my lock of Ghana embrace Islam. So here's the pivoting point. All right, this cop Abdur is who converted to Islam my naga. So you got the Rashid tribes, but they are coming out of the tribe of Benjamin. Son of Kish, <laughs> a member of the tribe of Benjamin. We're talking Saul and his grandson, Afghanistan. <laughs> and it wasn't until Kaas, Kaas Abdul Rashid, who was a descendant of Afghanistan, embraced Islam. So that's when they switch it up from being, you know, the tribe of Israel, you know, uh, worshiping the Israelite, you know what I'm saying, power to the Islamic power. Arabic, but are we talking Arab proper? Okay. We're going to talk Muhammad in a minute. Just hold that, hold that. We're still talking jock time. We're still talking air proper. Okay. And we're talking phantoms and duplications because we got an Ofer, a Vala, and a Sheba coming right out the line of Eber or Shem. Nothing to do with this Kush up here, Havala, Sheba, right? Or are we just talking Kish? <laughs> I mean, which one is it, man? Which one is it, man? Is it Kish or Kush, man? All right. I mean, as you see, it's getting uh, mighty, mighty amazing. I mean. Okay, so Jaktan, second son of the two sons of Eber. There's an Arab tradition that Jaktan or Katan was the progenitor of all the purest tribes. Whoa, of Central and Southern Arabia. Okay, we're just talking pure now. Or Arab proper. And this is why the Ishmaelite Arabs were not, were of non-Arab stock, because they weren't coming out the purest tribes. We're talking the tribes of Isaac. Khan, Khan. Purest tribes of Central and Southern Arabia. We're talking Arab proper, Managa, but I never was even taught to make that distinction. I thought those Arabs were the Arabs, that they can all claim Arab under these seeds of Ishmael and all that, but they are pretending. They are pretending to be Arabs. <laughs> Pretending to be Arabs while they walk around their cube. Migrate. Like it's all good, right? We're the proper. We got proper harmonics. Well, what did these harmonics do in the Dakum say war? I mean, I see 1810 on the map. <laughs> You know, all this is 1800s, typical new flow. Mecca, 1810 right here. Uh, somebody left a great comment, said that they're reversing, you know what I'm saying, um, our flow from left to right, you know, when we were primarily right to left, Naga's reading from right to left. Did they reverse our harmonics with their holy mountain is it, is it holy to the creator or holy to their power bye for me I'm talking bye for me bye for me for muhammad bye for me that was worshiped as a deity by the treacherous Templars, you know, not the real OG Templars, love to the bro, but the treacherous Templars. 
You got to talk these Cathars too, man. Oh, boy. Yeah, I'm just taking my time with this because this is their GOAT. This, their sabbatical GOAT. And even if this image was redrawn by Eliphaz Levi, you know, it's all a part of their foundational flow. They know it's a deity. They know it's not Hawaii. It has nothing to do with it. The creator never gave them this, this energy to serve. They know. They know Baphomet equals Mahomet. Right here on the map, we're talking the idolatrous neighbors of Preston John. Oh, Ishmael, my great. Okay. Pretending to be Arabs. Ishmaelite Arabs were originally non Arab. Pretending. All right. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's get this clear because, you know, it's, it's, it's never been presented to me you know, this way. So, you know, we're, we're presenting it <laughs> real fresh, real primary mem sauce. So love to the bro yourself. Look out for the reconstruction pack. Let's get it, man. Allow what? Uh, Cause I can't make this stuff up. Man. All right. So, so, you know, we're still talking over, right? <laughs> Cities of gold. But we see this duplication. Kish or Kush, you know, Wiki, what you got, what you guys say about Jokta? I know you got some drop. <laughs> Jokta, second of the two sons of Eve, we got that, all right, all right. So he's popping off Sheba, Ophir. <laughs> now, Ophir is a port or region mentioned in the Bible, famous for as well. King Solomon received a cargo from Ophir every three years and we've been connecting that with with the philippines you know what i'm saying you got solomon islands over there you got a lot of stuff popping off with this ofra i mean it's a lot of gold drop popping off around this ofra my nog has been dropping it for a long time but just see how this parallels a lot with not just the kush flow but you know with the nimrod flow there just seems to be a duplicate when it comes out this line of ashur like you know, the same things that's, you know, being popped off on the Kush side is being popped off by the Ashur side. You know what I mean? But let's talk about it, man. Let's talk about it. So Pseudo Philo's account, Joktar was first made prince over the children of Shem. Hmm. Just as Nimrod, here we go with the duplications, and Fennec were princes over the children of Ham and Jap. Okay, so joke time is very important, right? We don't talk about them enough, but what's this connection with the Yucatan, the land of Shem? In his version, the three princes command all persons to take bricks for the Tower of Babel, however, 12, including several of Joktan's own sons, as well as Abraham and Lot, refused the orders. Joktan smuggles them out of Shinar and into the mountains to the annoyance of the other two princes. Mm. So Abraham said, nah, man, I'm not going to take or to bake bricks for the Tower of Babel. Excuse me. So, so they were commanded to bake bricks to make this Tower of Babel. Okay. But Joktan, his sons, Abraham and Lot, all refused. Joktan smuggled them out of Shinar. All right. <laughs> There's an Arab tradition that Joktan was the progenitor of all the purest tribes. Here we go again. Of Southern Arabia, Joktan has been identified with Katan, right? With a K, now they're using the Q. Same thing with the word Kum, right? You could use Q, like Q-U-M, or K-U-M. Kum. Joktan is also Katan. Ancestral figure of the Katanites. Whoa, who's that? 
<laughs> Who's the Cottonites, man? We're learning something new when we die, tie in our Arabian uh, Nagas, you know what I'm saying? I'm talking Arabian, Arabi, or uh, Arab proper. You know, I'm not talking the, you know what I'm saying, pretenders. I'm talking the proper Arabs. Three of Joktan's sons have connections in South Arabia. Sheba is, described, is identified as the ancient South Arabian kingdom of Saba. Right, this is where you're getting this with the Sabians, you know what I'm saying? And, hey, let's go. Hazar Maveth has been identified with the South Arabian region of Hadramaut. And according to various Bible dictionaries, the name Hazar Maveth means court of death, which reflects a meaning similar to the Arab folk etymologies of the region. Hadoram, according to Rabbi Era Kaplan, is interpreted as denoting the south and it was a fortress to the south of Yemen's Sanaa. Wow, so this obsolete theory is okay. These gotta be the best ones if they're gonna call them obsolete. Let's collect the Mongo. They say Mongoloid. Remember, Mongo means great or great one. So when they say Mongo, they mean the great one. So that's how you connect this great ones with the Hebrews, with the Americans, and they about to do it right here. Because we're talking Jokta, so we're talking Hebrew, we're talking Mongol, <laughs> and we're talking America, let's go. All in one, one sentence, let's go. Obsolete theories based on a literal reading of Genesis 10, 30, which states that Jokta's descendants migrated eastward, suggested that Jokta is the progenitor of the Mongoloid race. Oh, 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 oh. now we're talking con flow, right? <laughs> we just connected as we've been doing the, the Mongol flow, the Mongol history, the Hebrew history with the Joktan Shem flow and the American history, let's go because he's the progenitor of the Mongoloid race, including East Asians, where's Asia, and the indigenous peoples of the Americas. Body pack. For the illusion. With the Yucatan Peninsula supposedly being named after Choctaw, Managa. Come on, man. The Yucatan, all that is Mexico. And they just said from Meche, you know what I'm saying, to the, uh, how they put it? How did they put it? From Mesha, as thou go to the Safar. And Safar also means book or connection, right? Like, you know, the at Safar. So this Mesha, like I said, connects with Moshe, connects with Mexico, just like the Joktan connects with the Yucatan. My God. So we're just talking Meshi all day, Mexica, Moshe. We're talking Shem, talking Joktan being the progenitor, popping off because he's the prince of Shem. And these are the cons of cons. This is where Judah's coming out of. David is coming out of, man. And who's these Cottonites, man? <laughs> Ancestral figure of the Cottonites. Oh, man. The term Cottonite with a Q, Q-A-H-T-A-N-I-T-E, refers to Arabs. Wait, Arab proper. Don't get it twisted with the pretenders who originate from South Arabia. The term Qatan is mentioned in multiple ancient Arabian inscriptions found in Yemen. You know where else is mentioned, man? <laughs> so 
for all kind of ways they spell it, man. Okay, okay. Oh boy. Let go. It's getting too good to us now, man. It's getting too good to a knock. Too good to a knock. <laughs> yeah. Just digging on, uh, you know, we're digging on a lot, <laughs> but we're talking about Jock Tan's son. Let me see if I can get that right quick. They call him Gur Hoon over here. Girl, this reminded me of this Gert Shen right here, Gert King, Gert Khan, this J-U-R situation. But again, this Katan, you know, as you see, is the Katan. Whether you spell it with a Q or with a K, they just they just called him the progenitor <laughs> in these traditions of theirs of the Mongol, right? Mongoloid. We're talking the great ones, these Mongols, these Genghis, and these Wong Khan, Preston John, who is the king or chief or the Khan of the Karakatai. Karakatai or the Karakatan. Katan is the Cathay. Cathay is right here on your map spelled with a C-A-T-A. Why? Why? Because this is the Katan, right? <laughs> Just to prove it, I mean, clearly, you know, with circumstantial evidence, <laughs> Katan is Cathay, is Katan, is Katan, right? They just said that Joktan as a theory, right? <laughs> it's not just the progenitor of the Mongol, but also the progenitor of the indigenous people of America connected with the Yucatan. The Joktan is the Yucatan. The Katanite, Kata, is the ancestral figure. The Kata, the Kar Kata, land of Prestigeon, is the Cathay, Kata. Just like with the roots, they say first found in Catholic, right? <laughs> Catholic is Cathay, my not. Is Catan or Joktan or Yucatan. And look how all this would be where Mexico would be, right? Yucatan, you know, from Mesha, Meshi, Catan, Cathay is exactly where, you know, the Yucatan Peninsula and all that would be. So, Wow, I just never took it that step further and connected Katan with Joktan. You know what I'm saying? But Joktan is so important. And knowing that Joktan is also spelled with a Q. Or even as they say to hear.
Kata in Arabic literature. That's why you got to tie in. You can't front on the Arabic flow because a lot of this original Arabic language in connection with the Hebrew language is all one thing and one people. We're talking Arab proper. So while I'm going in on the more and more war, I'm also rescuing the babies out the bathwater with the tribe tribe. So we're not just saying, oh, Arab, oh, that's just Ishmael. Nah, <laughs> nah. Arab ain't just Ishmael, man. Because Ishmael Arabs are not the original stock. They are the pretending Arabs. And in Arabic literature, Jugtan is also spelled with a K or a Q. Katan with a K or a Q. Kar Katan Kane or Western Liao. And they're all connected with the she, Shishir, and the Almekalelu's flow, man. Existed 1124 CE. Yellow Dashi proclaimed himself king in the year 1124 while still in Mongolia. Mongolia. Didn't they just say that? He's the progenitor of the Mongoloid race. Who's the Mongoloids? <laughs> various indigenous, a grouping of various indigenous people, indigenous to large parts of Asia and the Americas and Europe and Oceania. The America, Asia, right? Huh? Huh? Asia? Cathay is Kata, is Katan, is Joktan. Whoa. Son of Shem, son of Eber. So when we're getting this Kavera Eber on the map, we're also getting Cathay. Cathay and Kavera on the map means you have Eber and Joktan on the map. <laughs> and Joktan is the son of Eber. Just like you have Anon or Anion on the map, son of David, Anon and David. All these are your people leaving a breadcrumb for you. They got to name it after your people. So you remember when you see these old maps, who you are. The Katans use the name Kara Katan or Hala Katan. See how they put the Q back on there to refer to themselves. Hala, like Hala, right? Pray. The phrase translates as black katan. Come on. Letting you know, no, right? Like black Cathay. But its original meaning remains unclear. <laughs> of course, because don't connect it with Joktan in the promised land. Prince of Shem. Since no extent. Records from the empire survive. I wonder why. Treaties. The only surviving historical records about the empire come from secondary sources since the empire took on trappings of Chinese state, of a Chinese state. We've been talking China <laughs> back in that Owaspi, right? So Chinese historians generally refer to the empire as Western Lao Dynasty, emphasizing its continuation from the Lao Dynasty in Manchuria. The Gherkins, Jerkons, refer to the empire as Dashi or Dashi Linya after its founder to reduce any claims the empire may have had to the old territories of the Lao dynasty. Here we go with the Muslims. See how they always come in? Muslims historians, Muslim historians initially refer to the state simply as Qatar or Kata or Cathay. And the Katan is the Katan, is the Joktan, son of Ibermanak, whose descendants, their place, their lot starts in Mesha, 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 Kor. <laughs> the Yucatan, right? Because we just talking Yucatan. 
Yep. Indigenous peoples of America, Yucatan. Karakatai, Cathay. Talking Mongols. <laughs> Mongolia. Okay, so again, car is spelled with a Q. Car is spelled with a K, right? Katai, same thing, spelled with a K. Katai, Katai, also spelled with a Q. Katai. Katani. Early Islamic historians identify Katan with Chokta, son of Eber, in the Hebrew Bible. Yeah. We keep going, but you see how deep this actually gets. I mean, remember Afghan. It's just the son of Jeremiah. <laughs> I mean, we're talking proper errors now, right? So, okay. Joktan, Katan, Katai, Cathay. We got Sheba and Ofer, you know, coming out of the lineage of Joktan. Sheba and Ofer, but they also have a Sheba and an Ofer coming out of Cush, right? And Havala. We got to find the one that also puts the Ofer in there. Let's, let's keep going. Who's Jokshan? <laughs> Jokshan, according to the Bible, he was the son of Abraham and his wife or concubine, Katar, Katar whom he wed after the death of Sarah. Jokshan had five brothers, Zimran, Medin, Medin, Ishbak, and Shu, Shua, as well as two half-brothers, Ishmael and Isaac. He was Ketor's second son and Abraham's fourth. Josephus records that Abraham contrived to settle them in colonies, and they took possession of the Troglodytes, and the country of Arabia Felix. As far as it reaches the Red Sea, Jokshan became the father of Sheba and Dada. Here we go. <laughs> He's also the father of Sheba. And Sheba's also coming out of Jokta. Dada had three sons named Ashorim, Let Tushim, and Luimi. In the history of the prophets and kings, Tabari says that the wife of the North Arabian ancestor Adnan Madad Lam was a descendant of Jokshan or Yokshan. I mean, looks to me like another phantom and another duplication. And how does this phantom fit in to the pie, to the whole pie? This is from the Digit Coal dot library dot w i c at c dot e d u the prosperity of shims if i get it bigger you know i'm having a good time in preston 91 digging on the drizna prosperity of shim supposed to be the earliest inhabitants of america shim the second son of noah had five sons who inhabited the land that began at the euphrates and reached to the Indian Ocean, and her names were Elan, Ashur, Arfaxai, Lud, and Arain. Salah, the son of Arfaxai, was the father of Eber. Okay. So that means that his uncle, Eber's uncle, is Ashur. Let's keep that in mind for research purposes, all right? So we're gonna talk ashore, but you know, ashore is the uncle of Joktar. Salah, the son of Arfaxad, was the father of Eber. Okay. <laughs> so Arfaxad has a son, Salah.
Okay, okay, okay. So Shem son Ashur, right? His brother Ark Foxad has Salah, who has Eber. Okay, got it. Whose eldest son was called Jokta. This Jokta was the father of 13 sons who were heads of as many nations. So they first they said Arabic nations, right? But then you realize we're talking Arab proper. We're still talking Israelites, right? Or, you know, those coming right out of this lineage connected with, you know, Shem, the, the Baruch of Hawa, the tribes of Hawa. With regard to the countries which they possess, very little can be said with any certainty. <clears throat> okay, so, but most of the ancients were of opinion that the East Indies, China, Japan must have been peopled by the descendants of Shen through Jokhtan, his great, great grandson. As the North and South American Indians are reasonably believed to be of different origin. And as much as the natives of the South were found to be not only more civilized than the rude tribes of the North, when first discovered by the Europeans, but their personal appearance, religion, language exhibited so striking a diversity which should at once authorize this belief. Many have supposed that Jokhtan or Yucatan, a province of Meshi, Mesha, Mexico, derives its name from Jokhtan. Among these areas, Montanus is the foremost and he thinks that Jokhtan himself either passed into America or that this continent or that this continent was peopled by his prosperity. Managa, and this is what we popping off with. Because we popping off. <laughs> as far as the origin and identity of nations can be traced by some similarity of names, Arius Montanus and his followers seem to offer a plausible conjecture as Yucatan, Jokatan, Juktan, and it's contracted state bears a very great resemblance to Jokhtan. We leave, however, this opinion as we found it a mere conjecture, still while we are under the necessity of giving to the Mexicans, Mexicans, and the inhabitants of the other southern regions. Oh, man. Can I get the next page? There we go. A different origin from that of the present red man of the North. It is quite reasonable to suppose that the earliest colonies that settled in America's were of the line of Shem and came no doubt from the Eastern and Northern parts of Asia, <laughs> which one such as China or Korea. <laughs> so they keep talking Asia. We're talking India superior. They talk in China, we talk in China. They talk in Catan and Cathay, we talk in Cathay. Con, we talk in Florida too and Mexico. So Jokhtan, Yucatan, all this drop, all what they're talking about, the Mongo flow. You got Mangi right here, Tangu, where Genghis Khan went to war with the Presta. Everything's here, man. Everything's been duplicated from here over to there their new world because this must be a new world if you're duplicating everything into it this can't be arabia arabia when it's not the proper arabia but we know that our nagas you know <laughs> had the drop they were given the keys And from the latter, the journey could easily be performed, as we shall afterwards see. The descendants of Shem were certainly the first of the prosperity of Noah that arrived at a state of civilization. No, not Egypt, Ham and Cush, Ham and Cush, Morocco. But man, you, you abandoned Shem all of a sudden. The first of the prosperity, posterity of Noah. To have civilization, man? Did they get this by walking around a cube or being in cold with our creator? And constant, consequently, might be looked upon as the authors of innumerable monuments of antiquity, which are scattered over the vast continent for the present 
Indians of North America were utterly unacquainted with the art of constructing them, as well as their history, even by tradition. Man, you don't know, because you just found us here in Asia Major. Of Ham, the third son of Noah, we have nothing to say as his prosperity, pos posterity, are not considered to have anything to do with the early peopling of America, except in as much as refers to the claims of the Carth Carthaginians by passing through the Straits of Gibraltar at a very remote period when, according to some historians, they discovered this continent. But this we shall examine in its proper place. We're talking Arab proper. Suffice it to say now that Hammy or Hamu was the founder or Ham was the founder of almost all African nations and the Philistines and Canaan Knights and the whole Confederacy. More and more war. Just more validation. When they talk, uh, you know, the settling of America, we know we're talking the copper color races <laughs> found here, found here, found here by the Europeans. <laughs> yeah man this is why they had to take your titles even the Arabic titles man they had to take everything make us seem like we nothing call us black say we from Africa right and our title is now being applied to the descendants of Europeans that are born here because yo ass thank you from Africa so it's a free for all since you're going back to Africa even though you were just found here as the copper color races, right? Now it's a free for all. They can take your titles. They can take your heritage, Managa, and give it to their descendants, man. Give it to their descendants. They've been taking your titles for a mighty long time. They've been hijacking the Khan titles, the indigenous Nagas of America titles. Oh, 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 man, descendants of Shem, Elam, Asher, Ark, Pakshad, Lud, and Era. Okay, then Jaktan comes out the Eber flow from Ark, Pakshad, and Shalar. His uncle or great uncle, however, you know, it's coming out, you know what I mean, is Ashur. And Ashur, just like Jaktan, is very hidden and very duplicated. <laughs> and, I, and I mean duplicated, duplicated, I mean. All right, so you got Ashur, second son of Shem, son of Noah, right? <laughs> Ashur's brothers were Elon, Mark Fox, Salud, and Aaron. Got it, got it, got it. Uh, prior to the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls, there was a contention here, some confusion, uh-oh, in academic circles. Oh, yeah, We're talking academia. They're confused whether Asher or Nimrod built the Assyrian cities of Nineveh, Resen, and Rahabath, Ur, and Kala. Since the name Asher can refer to both the person and the country. Well, I mean, just looking at Ashur, we see that Ashoria or Assyria, you know, is definitely connected directly with this name, Ashur. And why would they credit Nimrod for building all these cities? Because he's coming out of Kush. <laughs> but it looks like you got two builders. Here we go with the <laughs> duplications you know you got Nimrod and you got Asher both of them are super duper popping off right but Asher's not really talked about he's not mentioned very much son of Shem but the son of Cush this mighty hunter Nimrod he's getting credited with all these Assyrian Ashurian cities that really belong to Asher right Nineveh Rezin Rehoboth Kala. So who built these great cities? Sir Walter Raleigh devoted several pages in his History of the World, 1616, to 
reciting past scholarship regarding the question of whether it had been Nimrod or Asher. So Sir Walter Riley, he has some scholarship concerning this. Academic, the academic circles has some scholarship concerning this. <laughs> whether Nimrod or Asher built the cities of Assyria. Both in the JPS Tanakh 1917 and 1611 King James Bible clarify the language of the Septuagint and Vulgate trans translations of Genesis 10 verse 11 through 12 by explicitly crediting Asher as the founder of the cities of Nineveh. So the 1611 gives the credit to Asher. What happened after that? What the new King James don't? New test, new uh, international version don't? <laughs> but the Tanakh did hmm sound like they covering something up sound like a cover up right <laughs> the GE's version of the book of Jubilees affirmed by the 15 Jubilee scrolls found among the Dead Sea Scrolls affirms that the contested lands in Genesis 10 verse 8 through 12 were apportioned to Ashur how many witnesses is that you got the Tanakh you got the 1611 and you got the Book of Jubilees, you know, confirmed within these Dead Sea Scrolls that Ashur built these great cities. And that's very important. That means it's right there in the line of Shem, right? Son of Shem. That means these are Shemite cities, right? These great cities that they want to credit to Cush, right? Ham and Cush. But it can't be Ham and Cush, Ham and Cush, Moab. Not when Asher's building your great Cushite cities. Oh, you don't want that. You don't want that. So they changed that. You don't want to give, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, Jeremiah, you know, son of, son of Saul, his credit. You know what I'm saying? You want to, you know, give this uh, Afghanistan flow to just, you know, these other tribes, you know, Ishmael and all these other tribes. You don't want to give, you know, Joktan the flow, the Yucatan flow. You know, you want that to be Ham and Kush. All of us, our relations to the indigenous Americas, you know what I'm saying? You can't cover up forever, but you could do a couple twists and swerves and put different doctrines out make us feel like we're from somewhere else, and then it starts all coming together for us. That Joktan is Katan, is Cathay. <laughs> the Katan is Joktan, Yucatan is Cathay, which is why Cathay is right here in the Yucatan, in Asia, connected to America. I mean, South America, Florida, Cathay, Joktan, Katan. Got it. Got it. So not only is Ashur being duplicated, but check it, man, check it. <laughs> Ashur goes deeper. Now we got to talk chronology because now they're going to start going crazy into the BCs with Ashur. Ashur, right now it's a whole other thing. Ansar, right? Sumerian. So we just went from the Hebrew, you know, biblical flow timeline and just jump, skip, <laughs> belly flop into Samaria, right? Asher, Kolot, Shurkot, Shurkot, S-H-E-R-Q-A-T was the capital of the old Assyrian state. But who built Assyria? Was it Nimrod or was it Asher? Now we're talking cuneiform. Okay. They 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 got us in 2000 BC and such and such. Middle Assyrian Empire, 1365 BC. Dodge all these hijacks because you could just be talking more, you know, recent pop offness <laughs> connected with the Yucatan, connecting with America, man. America. So Neo-Assyrian Empire, 900 B.C., all right. 
they're connecting it with all this stuff. Occup occupation of the city itself continued for approximately 4,000 years from early dynastic period to the mid 14th century AD. Interesting. I mean, what happened then? <laughs> Back to the more and more war when the forces of turmoil massacred its predominantly Christian population. The site is a World Heritage Site having been added to the organization's list of sites in danger 2003. Now they're in Iraq and all that, right? Then it says Asser lives 65. Oh, hold up, what they say? 2003 following the conflict that erupted following the U.S.-led 2003 invasion of Iraq. And a result, and as a result, of a proposed dam, dam, which would flood some of the site. So not only have they been flooding our Naga cities here, but they're flooding all of our cities connected everywhere, whether we say it's Asher over here or Asher over there. You know what I'm saying? All of it's connected with us, man. You know what I'm saying? And they're proposing a damn dam. That was in 03, so most likely it's already popped off. Um, you know, they say in China is blowing up all these Tibet structures and statues and all these different things. Everyone's going crazy, destroying evidence, man. Evidence of what the people look like and who they are for real, for real. Now they got a dam that's supposed to flood their site. And then it says, I sure sits uh, 65 kilometers or 40 miles south of the site of Nimrod. So Here's this Ashur Nimrod flow, and we just got <laughs> that they don't know if it was Ashur or Nimrod who built the great cities of Assyria. And now with Assyria, they're bringing us back way to the BCs, 2000 BCs. But they still put Ashur right next to Nimrod, right? Yeah, south of Nineveh. So Asher built all this. This is all Shem land. All oh, this is Shem land. Well, let's get it over here. Asher city. Let's look at this fandom. Asher city. Also spelled ashore. One of the first cities built after the flood. My God. After the flood. Okay. After the days of Peleg, right? <laughs> the earth divided. Okay. Joktan and Peleg are brothers, sons of Eber. Okay. Okay. And Asher. Descendants of Shem, Elam, Asher. And Eber's coming from Arkpakshad. Grandson, all right, I got it, man. So, I mean, we, we just, just trying to line all this up. From its beginning, it would grow in influence to become the city of Assyria from Asher, my knocking. So Nimrod didn't build it. No one's saying that. But this is what they've been put into the conjecture. We're talking about the son of Shem. It was located south of Nineveh, the Tigris River. Okay, etymology, Asher is named after a son of Shem, Ashur. The name is drawn from the root Asar, A-S-R, meaning to advance, to progress from this. It's apparent that the sons of Noah wish to fulfill the commandment to increase the population of the new world into which they had come. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Though rarely mentioned by name as capital, the city represented one of the most influential civilizations of the ancient world. Out of the hall of government, their armies would be sent to conquer most of Mesopotamia and the Middle East all the way to Egypt, right? Just skipping down here, it says, in the third generation after the flood, Nimrod, son of Cush, began a building program spreading out along the banks of the Tigris River and over towards the Euphrates and America. 
At the same time, his uncle Asher built four cities, Nineveh, Rehoboth, Kala, and Razim. After the fall of Babel, Babel, long live Asher, his brother Arphaxad, lived to be 438 years old, would have fled with his growing family to a safe distance upriver, establishing a town below Kala, or Kali. <laughs> his family would call the town by his name, much like the people of Ur, the true God would be soon forgotten. Bang. That's how we get here, man. That's how we forget. We forget our power. We forget ourselves. And they would soon begin to worship a God. They named that shit. Whoa. <laughs> so first the city's named after. Then after they fall, they name a God after Asher. Why? Well, because to these, you know, lost tribes coming later, right? They're looking at Asher as the son of Shem, you know what I'm saying? Shem, you know, to any, you know, regular unlearned person would be like an angel, would be like a god to them. You know what I'm saying? His son Asher, just like Nimrod, will be considered and deified later. So Asher became deified later. They named a god after him then, right? A temple to this god would dominate the city after the capital had been moved. So this is why you're seeing his name, whether you see the God Asher or, this, or the city or the uh, Assyria kingdom, you know what I'm saying? Or you're just talking Asher, son of Shem, you know what I mean? You're getting back to the root. Again, you got the God Asher, Asher, or Eastern Semitic God. So now you're in Semitic God. <laughs> Shemetic God, right? <laughs> but it's really a person that's being venerated later on, right? And the head of the Assyrian pantheon and Mesopotamian religion in the, in the Mesopotamian religion worshiped mainly in northern Mesopotamian parts of northeast Syria, southeast Asia Minor. They have to call it Asia Minor because this Managa, Cathay, Katan, Joktan is Asia Major. Asia, major, man, we popping off. We're talking Asia major, man. We're talking Arabs proper. And remember, man, you know what I'm saying? Joktan just got a special flow. Because when you talk Joktan, you're talking the purest tribe. You're talking the Katan. You're talking the Cathay. You're talking Cathay with a K or a C or a Q. Cathay, Qatar, Afghan. <laughs> it's all making sense. It's all making sense, man. Rocking with David and Solomon, King Saul's grandson, Afghan. And this is why, you know, it gets us talking about these pure water tribes. Because we're not talking about no pretenders, man. Ishmael Arabs were pretending. These so-called Arabs are coming directly out the tribes of Hasharah of Israel, which is why they've been confederate against us and going so hard. I mean, I just had to figure this out because they walk around this cube like they're going crazy. Ishmael pretending to be Arabs and claiming Arabia and they're claiming these kingdoms under Nimrod and all this ham and Kush business, man. And we just like... You got to make it make sense, man. You got to make these damn dams make sense. Just like you're damming up the place over there. Grand Rapids Dam was a dam located on the Wabash River on the state line between Wabash County and Knox near Mount Caramel. Uh, love to my aqua top battle and uh, Abiyami. My has been popping off, man, dropping that Cairo drop and, you know, all this connecting. And it's, it's really, 
exciting stuff, man, to see it all come together. All my Naga surfing the wave on the IG already. No, man. <laughs> I may, uh, they're gonna make me sign up for this. I'm already signed up, man. Yeah, I mean, you know, get this drop, man. I mean, I got it on the, in the drop, uh, drop, drop, chatter, 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 chatter. Hey, I have everybody surfing the wave in the drop chatter box. Because you already know. You know, maps like this, love the confat, man. <laughs> He's popping up. Where's North America, man? He's really popping up. Confat A out to you, man. The bro's really kicking that driz knot, man. Hey, the water to you for leading us to the water. Let's keep breaking down these damn. It's crazy. Ain't we just talking to damn dance, man? We just talking damn dance, confat A out to you, bro. You know what I mean? And, this is a you know incredible map because it's starting to get even clearer, man. Love to the Aqua, Aqua Hawaiian Empire and Island Black girls when they do. All right, I mean all these you know you still see the Morocco flow, same place it has you know at the other map, Morocco, Mecca, all that's still right there. All right, you got the four corners here. We've been digging on this Cochise County. We're going to get back on that with the Esteban flow. But right where Cochise would be, it says Eden, man. Hey, hey. <laughs> Nogaville, we popping off, man. It says Eden, my Naga. Hey, Naga Hill, Nogaville. We popping off. Moab, okay. Yeah, all this is... <laughs> All this is happening. Then you got Cairo popping off this Illinois flow. You know what I'm saying? So I ask you, man, I mean, is it is it play play? Yeah, man, this this stuff's starting to hit a lot different these days. We just talking Kara, Kara, Katan, Black Cathay. Cathay also means pure land, man. So, you know, that's why they say, you know, all this, you know, has to do with this purity, these pure tribes, not the pretenders, not the pretenders, my life, the real ones, the pure tribe, the cons of cons, not the pretenders, man. Let's get it from here, man. <laughs> Off this great, uh, you know, discussion going on on Facebook, you know, just. And they're talking about the cobblestone and something about it being used as a toilet, you know, by somebody, you know, I don't know what's going on. Somebody stealing it, defiling it. I was going to pick it up from here in the Quran uh, 34. Let's get into the sir, man. Let's talk service, man. <laughs> talking Sarah. Let's go. And those books and those before them rejected the truth. And these have yet attained a tenth of which we gave them, but they gave the lie to my messages. How terrible was then my disapproval. And thou was not at the side of the mountain when we call, but a mercy from thy Lord that thou mayest warn a people to whom no warner came before thee, that they may be mindful. These people, man, these pretenders had no warner. That means they had no prophets. They had no, no messengers. <laughs> so by the time they got Muhammad coming in 700 AD or whatever, man, they finally got a messenger, man. They finally got a warner, man. They finally got someone to warn them about something. But who sent him, right? We're going to get into the o Waspy next, man. <laughs> You know, just talk about that for the dismount. Come right back in on it. This is Preston 91, but who's warning them, right? I'm talking about who's these adversaries that the Preston's up against? Who's who's tribed up with Genghis Khan, right? <laughs> All right, we're in 32 to the revelation of the book. There is no doubt that it is from the Lord of the Worlds. Or do they say he has forged it? Nay, it is the truth from thy Lord that they are. Thou mayest warn a people to whom no warner has come before thee, that they may walk all right. What kind of people never had a warner, never had a messenger? 
this is why they want to steal your message <laughs> steal your message and then you know really link on to their messages so claim because they never had a moses man think about it man they never had a joshua you know what i'm saying <laughs> they never had an elijah you know what i'm saying i mean a dawi you know they had to crown themselves right and their prophet is coming from this anointing that according to the OASP is coming right from this Thoth, right, to Hootie flow, which makes sense for their Egypt connection with permission of the, of the Pharaoh, they're migrating. Yeah, these are the announcements relating to the unseen, which we, we reveal to you. Thou didst not know them neither, nor thou nor their people before this. <laughs> he, he didn't even know. Hawa says, you, only you, of all the families have I known, of all the families of the earth, they had no warner, they had no one. Hawa didn't know them, Hawa didn't send no one to them. So be patient, surely the good end is for the dutiful man. Then it says the, uh, the Moabites and Midianites, though distantly related to the children of Israel, distantly through Abraham, following other Elohim, other powers were with King Balak and Moab wanting Balaam to curse the children of Israel, returning from the Egyptian slavery, passing by the territory. Yet Awah objected to this in Numbers 22. Let's go ahead and get it. And the children of Israel set forth and pitched in the plains of Moab on the side of Jordan by Jericho. And Balak, the son of Zippor, saw all this, all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab said unto the elders of Medi, Now shall this opportunity lick up all that are around about us, <laughs> as the ox lick, lick up the grass of the field. And Balak, the son of Zipporah, was the king of the Moabites at that time. And Balan said unto God, who's God? <laughs> Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, has sent, me, has sent unto me, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt, which covers the face of the earth. Now, are they talking about us? To them, we're just covering the face of the earth coming out of bondage. Come now, curse me, them, peradventure, I shall be able to overcome them and drive them out. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are Baruch, they are blessed. See, Moab been trying to curse us for a long, long time. Numbers 22, verse 2, Balak said, and Balak the son of Zippor saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites, and Moab was sore afraid of the people because they were many. They covered the face of the earth, and Moab was overcome with dread. They've been afraid of us because of the children of Israel. And Moab said unto the elders of Median, now will this multitude lick up all that's around us. They're going to take everything, the grass of the field. <laughs> and Balak, the son of Zippor, was the king of Moab at the time. And he sent messages unto Balaam, the son of Beor, to Pethor, which is by the river to the land of the children of his people, to call them, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth. And they abide over against me. Mm. Now come, therefore, I pray you curse me, this people, man. Moab been cursing us for a long time. <laughs> Making treaties on treaties for a long time. This ain't nothing new, man. Ain't nothing new under their sun, right? <laughs> that we may smite them. This is what they did with their treaties, man, in real time. And that I may drive them out the land, for I know that he whom thou blessed is blessed, and he who thou curses curse, and the elders of Moab and the elders of Median departed 
with the rewards of divination in their hand. And they came to Balaam and spoke unto him the words of Balak. And he said unto him, said unto them, Lodge here this night, and I will bring you back word. And the Lord may speak unto me. And the princes of Moab abode with Balaam. And Awa came unto Balaam and said, What men are these with you? And Balaam said unto Hawa, Balak, Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, has sent unto me, saying, Behold, the people that has come out of Egypt, it covers the face of the earth. Now come, curse me them. Peradventure I shall be able to fight against them and shall dry them out. And Hawa said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are Baruch. Yeah, we in our uh, Presta 91. Let's go ahead and get Psalms 91. But now I guess we tie this all together, you know what I mean? And connect a few things on into Presta 92. And hey, allow what, man? Shabbat Shalom. We, we see it clearly. <laughs> we see the gang. We see the name and the rules of the gang. Oh, King of Moab, you, you've been cursing us. For a long time. I mean, what did Psalms 83 say? <laughs> they are confederate against you. They said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation. So the name of Israel be no more in remembrance. They have consulted together with one consent, man. Against us, do they make a covenant? Psalms 91. O thou that dwells in the covert of the Most High, and abide us in the shadow of the Almighty, I would say of Hawa, who is my refuge and my fortress, my power, whom I trust, that he will deliver you from the snare of the fowl. They, they cursing us, but Hawa is our deliverer. And from the nose, some pestilence, that's uh, Moab in him. You know, that's, that's Ishmael in there, right? He will cover you with his pinions. We're talking his feathers. We're talking feather dracon, and under his wings shall you take refuge. <laughs> his truth is a shield and a buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, or the pestilence that walks in darkness, Moab, Ammon, nor the destruction of that waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand. This is why they mad, son. This is why they afraid. It shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall thou behold and see the recompense of the wicked. These treaties, we gonna see it with our eyes. We will behold your recompense. I'm talking to the wicked, the pretenders. For thou hast made a wah who is my refuge, even the most high over everything, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall you. How do you make Hawaii your habitation? Say it with me. KTC, you keep the cold. Now you are in the habitation of the creator and ain't no evil going to befall you, my naga. Neither shall any plague come near your tent, my naga. For he will give his angels, his dracons, charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear thee upon their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and asp, the young lion and the serpent shall thou trample under your feet. I'm talking the alchemical serpent, man, because he has set his love upon me. He's KTC, therefore I will deliver him. I will deliver her. I will set him on high. What does Utah mean? What does Judah mean? High, my nugget. Because he has known my name, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and bring to him honor. With long life will I satisfy him and make him to behold my 
salvation, not JC, not Muhammad, the creator's salvation, my salvation. And we just popping off, man. <laughs> Allow wow. Yeah, Confat, they damning up the place, Illinois to Indiana and everywhere else, man. We're going to get more on these damn dams connected with the Concord Key because they damning up the place with their damn spells, man. Their damn harmonics, their damn powers for the dismount, man. <laughs> They're damning up the place, man. What is Utah me? What is Utah me? Hi, you all. I will set you high. A while saying I will put you in your own land. You Utah's tech huh? <laughs> children of Hawaii. I'll put you in your own land, man. Allow And you know, we're gonna come back in out. I'm tying back in this a while. be last time we got some China drop. Now we're getting, you know, a little bit of this Muhammad drop. This origin of Mohammedanism, right? And it says right here now, for upward for a thousand years, the angel warrior Gabriel, alias Thoth, had been to Louis Mong, his most faithful sub gods. So these are sub gods. <laughs> these are fallen ones. Thoth ain't no real power. He's a sub. He's trying to substitute into the power. And Louis Ma had promised Gabriel when he overthrew Baal and cast him in hell, he would give to Gabriel a great heavenly kingdom. So Gabriel gets a kingdom, right? Thoth gets a kingdom, right? And everybody wants to be down with this kingdom all of a sudden. <laughs> so they're walking around their cubes because Gabriel inspired him, man. Gabriel, who is Thoth, inspired Muhammad, right? The Lord said, Gabriel raised upon the earth one Muhammad, Muhammad Baphomet, and inspired him through his angel host. And the angels inspired Muhammad to go once every month in the year to the cave of Hurrah, on which occasions Gabriel came in person, Thoth came in person and talked with Muhammad, who had Zeus in great perfection. 12 years in peace that Gabriel inspired mortals through Muhammad. But at the end of 13 years, Muhammad attained his sufficient strength to draw the sword for Gabriel's doctrines. <laughs> and with the sword, it was a more and more war. And Gabriel, through inspiration, caused the Muhammadans to come around commemorate this as the beginning of his kingdoms because now he has the sword drawn and they therefore consecrated the sad part of time and on the first meeting of the faithful and gabriel muhammad being under inspiration or the spell uh and you know remember thought had the in the emerald tablets thought had the uh, slave vibration so they're calling it inspiration <laughs> So Muhammad himself is under the slave vibration of the Gabriel thought. Speaking before the multitude saying, there is but one God, he is God, heaven is his. So this is what they'll say in Islam, one God, Allah, boom, but they're coming with a different power and a different inspiration because they never were given a warner before, but now they have thoughts. Thoth got their back. Yeah. <laughs> Thoth got their back. Yeah. It's too real, too true. It's too real, too true. And it came to pass that wherever Muhammad went, there was sure victory like that, the like of which had not been for centuries. So they got their warner. <laughs> they got their pop offness. Muhammad, Muhammad was shown by this Gabriel, and he used it as a battle cry for his soldiers. This Muhammadan flow was all about soldiers and swords and battle cries. 
Verse 29, nevertheless, many of the Israelites and Jews so-called were apostates, in fact, eating flesh and marrying with other people. So, okay. <laughs> eating swine or eating flesh. Interesting, huh? <laughs> marrying with other peoples. God. Now, after the fall of the great empire, Egypt, her people migrated westward. Uh oh, here we go for the dismount. Monarch. <laughs> her people migrated westward, hundreds of thousands of them, and they settled in Western Europe, Europa, where these people married with the Aborigines. Their offspring were called Druids, Picts. Look out for the Pick series. Could be coming in hot. Gales, Wales, well. <laughs> The Welsh, Gauls, Yahans, all of which are Egyptian names preserved to this day. So when they say this Gabriel popped up talking to Muhammad, we see clearly <laughs> that we're just talking thoughts, man. Yeah. Thoth, alias Gabriel, then sent this message to Louis Mong. Louis Mong is who they call Christ. He's supposed to be the real name, right? <laughs> Second, thou art not Christ, which is all knowledge, but a usurper, a pretender. So now they even got pretenders. Third, that I made thee what thou art, and by my own hand help you to cast out Baal, Asherah, and all the Romanian and Argosian guys. So this OASP just gives you this battle of these fallen gods, battle of these entities that are battling for your energy, battling for your energy. Accordingly, Gabriel applied for Jerusalem, his station. So Thoth took over the promised land, right? Apollo, right? Atlantis, con. And for the heavens thereunto, and for 1,000 million slaves, Gabriel <laughs> uh, was rocking, you know, for these uh, Hebrew slaves. He applied for Jerusalem as his station, and for the heavens thereunto, because the heavens, right, are connected with the land. <laughs> For 1,000 million slaves, my nigga? Yeah, I'm talking Gabriel, alias Thaw. And this is the origin of Mohammedism. Gotcha. And this is the origin of their Muhammad or their Baphomet, because Baphomet equals Muhammad. Khan. And <laughs> Thoth or Baphomet has everything to do with androgyny, and androgyny is the alchemical serpent, not the dragon, right? Two different things. The dragon is the life, the vessel in which the spirit is contained, unknown to these hijacks. Oh, but the serpent is the impersonal nature of the unconsciousness as it bursts into consciousness. This serpent is always a part of the symbolism that brings the opposites together. The androgynous God, male and female, androgynous God, who's the union of king and queen, male and female, androgynous God, is their Baphomet. Is their Muhammad. And it's right here <laughs> with the fear spell. Champagne, moraine, glaciations, and uh, ice, ice walls and ice sheets. Hey, we represent for Eber. <laughs> we represent for the real ones, man. We bring it all back home for the Joktans, not the pretending Arabs, but the real ones, man. I'm talking about the Kata, the Cathay, the original flow, the purest tribes, my knife. 
the guitar. The golden ones, the remnants, <laughs> the ancient love song. This is what we do it for. The indigenous lodges, man, the Yucatan, the Jagtan, Khan, the Karakata, the Meshe, the Mesha. Oh, they say this is identified with Mecca. Oh, so they changed Mesha to Mecca? Wow. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Oh, we just talking mocha now. Got you. We just talking Ofer, the place from which Solomon brought the gold. Well, Ofer is the son of Jokta. Last time that I checked. Yeah, I mean, Ofer, right? Sheba, Ofer, gotcha. Avili, Ofer, Sheba. Yokta, Kokta, Jokta. Interesting, huh? Gamora, they say it's really Amora. Uh oh. <laughs> so Sodom and Gamora was destroyed by two dragons. And, it's, and the real name is Amora. It's not Gamora, it's Amora. Like the Amorites. Wow. And that's why Gamora went down. Got it. Okay. <laughs> but he's talking Amorites and Amora. Huh? I think we see it clearly, my nugget. Asher, man, you know, Asher is building a Nineveh. Asher's building Assyria, my nugget. We still talking Shem, which means we ain't talking Ham and Kush. We're talking Akkad, which means we're talking Acadia, Free Phineas. We're talking Acadian Green Jackets, man. It's all happening around here, man. We having too much fun and we're connecting the reality you know, uh, hey, you got to get out your feelings, man. What the bro nine say facts over, over feelings, man. The lost kingdom of Antioch will be picking it up right here in Preston 92, man. Been working our way to it. And William uh, Harris, is it Harris? Yeah, or Hannes. <laughs> William Hannes got the drop, man. Uh, they call it an alternative history. Hey, we're just talking Anon. You know, some will call it K9, and they will put a K or a C in front of Anna. That's why we said choose your Canaan. Could you talk in Cana, Canaan, or are you just talking Ania, Ania, Regna? Hey, Allah, why? The tribes know what it is, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, we're going to get real mappy. You know, just dig on what's going on, man, with the Ania, Regna lost civilization they're going to connect it with british columbia or vancouver and all that all that's connected directly with oregon and washington all the way down to cali man so <clears throat> it says uh similar to other mysteries and lost places in our past like atlantis <laughs> all right this is el dorado camelot or troy might we begin to resurrect this mysterious place from not so long ago by assembling the fragments of our recorded annals of history and find the lost civilization of Andia Regnum, man. Hey, this is the Presta Hour, Presta John, installment 91 for the tribe tribe. Allow why. Uh, 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 uh. Let go. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Again, you got Quivera, which is Kibera or Hebera or Eber. And Eber is near the Yucatan Jocta, right? <laughs> 
son of Eber Jokta, Ania, son of the Preston, man. As land, hey, it's all happening right here, man. You know, sept means seven cities of gold. <laughs> what do you see right there in the middle? Cibola, Cibola, Cibola. Hey, we do it for Kalelus. Cibola means promised land or Shimbala or Sheba. And again, we're just talking chop chop, man. <laughs> we out of here, baby. Uh, 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 Let go. Oh, yeah, this Fu Sang is interesting history. 1,000 years before the European explorers arrived in the New World, a Chinese monk by the name of Hua Shan, Hua Shan, accompanied by four other monks, sailed north to Japan and the Kam Kat Ka Peninsula. They continued east to modern day Alaska, south to the Pacific coast. He called this area Fu Sang, referring to a Chinese mythological tree. Uh, we're about to get on that Mount Rorima, man. Get some more details into that. But what tree? We're talking tree of life, mulberry tree, which is said to be in the east where the sun rises. Each morning, the sun is said to rise from Fusan and fall on Ramu. Man, I'm talking about Rorima. <laughs> we're having a good time, man. Yeah, man. It's all happening, man. Thank the water for your continued energy, your continued support, man. Surfing the way with us, because you know we surfing the way with you, man. Love to Abba Yah. We're going to get some of this Book of the Earth dismount next time. We got more time to fall back in it, but this is definitely a belly flop session right here. Appreciate Altruskin Grace Media. And we'll also get your comments coming in hot, man. Uh, you know, we're just talking about Shem. And we got to represent for Shem because they're going to represent for him and Kush. We all family, but it's a tribal war. More or more, man. And we ain't having no more of this, man. <laughs> no more of these harmonics, man. Hey, the water drop next year. You know how we do. One shepherd forever. My servant David shall be king over there, and they shall have one shepherd. Walk in my ordinances, KTC. Observe the code, keep the code, and do it. And they shall dwell in the land. That's all we're talking about is our land that I have given to Jacob, my servant. Or in your father's dwell, Joktan, Yucatan, Mexico. Kaleluz Ania, <laughs> and they shall dwell therein, they and their children, their children's children forever. And David, my servant, David, my servant, David, my servant, shall be their prester, their prince forever. I will make a covenant. Forget about their treaties. I will make a covenant of peace. Forget about their treaties of peace and friendship. I got my own covenant of peace with them. It shall be for an everlasting treaty, my naga. We're going to make an everlasting covenant with Hawa. And I will establish them. The creator establishes us. We don't need your paperwork. And multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forever, forever, ever. My dwelling place also shall be over them. This is why they mad. This is why they never had a warner. This is why they never had a prophet before. Because so Hawa's dwelling place ain't with them. I will be their power. 
This is why they had to go to false powers. And they shall be my people. <laughs> and the nation shall know, the hijack will know, I am Hawa that sanctifies Hashirah. When my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forever. <laughs> hey, we back, cons. We did it again. Allow Hawa to the tribe. Shabbat Shalom. Keep popping off and keep the water flowing. Shalom.